So I did a video similar to this almost about a year ago, and I realized there were a few things that I could have added to the list about life here in Grand Junction. Everything from the old-fashioned family conservative values, how they love their freedoms, and boy, do they love their dang guns here in Grand Junction. So this is just going to be a brutally honest video that if you do not like these 10 things, you might want to consider avoiding moving out here to Grand Junction. We're going to do it right now. What's up, everybody? I'm Robert Hayes, along with my wife, Christy. We are the Hayes Home Group right here in Grand Junction, Colorado. Hey, if this is your first time to this channel, thanks so much for hopping in. While you're here, you might as well hit that subscribe button. Tap that bell over there. That way you're notified every single time we post a new video. We are honestly getting phone calls every single day from people looking to move out here from all over the country. And we absolutely love it. So if that's you, as much as we love making these videos, we would love nothing more than to crush your real estate goals moving out this way. So that number popping up low, reach out, give us a phone call, shoot us a text, send us an email. We answer all those personally because we got your back days, nights, weekends, when moving here to Grand Junction. So let's just get right into it. Number one, Grand Junction is pretty much leaning towards that conservative, old-fashioned family values. And that's something that I absolutely love. Now, I came from a county in California, Orange County, about 15 years ago. That was probably the reddest county in the entire state in Grand Junction. That doesn't hold a candle to Grand Junction. Now, I'm not going to get into politics and voting records and all that sort of thing, but the folks here love their freedom. They love the flag. They love America. And like I said, boy, do they love their Second Amendment. Now, it's not something where you're going to see everyone walking around town just flashing their firearm. Now all of you skunks, clear out of here! It's not like that at all. It's just a belief that if you want that personal protection, and again, you, you believe in the Second Amendment, they, they do too. Uh, that's just something that's a really big deal here. And then, of course, to that end, hunting is definitely something that a lot of folks are into here. I remember when Cabela's came into town, um, everyone was freaking out. Oh my gosh, we have a Cabela's now. So um, my son, myself, and my son, we're not hunters, but we love uh, you know knowing the safety uh, of handling a firearm he's taken the courses in fact here's a photo of christy look at that with an m5 she actually beat me on that round but um again it's just it's the old-fashioned family values are i think a good thing so that pretty much takes us right into number two which is the individuality here uh, for the folks in Grand Junction is pretty strong. And what I mean by that is if you have your beliefs, they just really don't want you to tell them how to believe themselves. Uh, case in point, looking back at the last year and a half, two years on what's been going on in the world, uh, our kids started on time for in-person learning and there isn't a mask requirement. And you know the folks here are just, just fine with that. Um, now, if you're a believer in maybe making sure that all the kids are, are masked up. Maybe that gives you, you know, kind of a pause moving out here. If you do have a family, um, of course, there are no restrictions for your children to wear a mask to school if that's what you want to do. Um, but again, that, that individuality is something that um, they're very strong in their beliefs. And again, if you have yours, that's fine. They just don't want you to kind of impose your beliefs on them. I remember talking to my sister about two years ago when all this madness started and uh, they were locked down there in California, and she asked me, what are you guys going to do this week? And I'm sure it's the same there in Colorado, specifically Grand Junction. And I didn't have the heart to tell her. We were going out to a nice indoor steak dinner with some friends. So, um, you know, I did have a, a friend here talk to them a couple of years ago. They were the managing director at the news station here. And I asked, you know, what do you, what do you choose to pick as a lead story? And she said, it's pretty simple. If it bleeds, it leads, meaning if it's a story that's going to get some clicks, that's going to drive advertisement. That's the first story that's going to lead. So, um, you know, take that into account as well. Uh, but again, I think it's a good thing. They're totally fine with your beliefs. 
They just don't want you to change their beliefs. All right, number three, are you a misanthrope? What is that? I didn't even know what that meant until I watched an episode of Dirty Jobs with Mike Rowe, and uh, he said that word. Basically, a misanthrope is people that don't like to be around other people, don't like people. Well, if you if you are a misanthrope, don't come to Grand Junction, Colorado. The people here, like I said, are super friendly, very welcoming. Uh, doesn't matter where you're from and what your beliefs are, they're gonna help out. Out. Like I said, give you their shirt off their back. They're going to open the door. They're going to, if you open the door, they're going to say thank you. Um, you just cannot get away from that down home, old fashioned lifestyle here in Grand Junction. Um, so if you're one of those, you know, you pull into the garage, you close the garage, you close the shades, and that's kind of, you know, that's your jam. It, you know, probably might not fit in very well here in Grand Junction because people will go out of their way to say hello, good morning, again, you know, thank you, the manners. That's a big thing here in Grand Junction. So just, you know, understand that people are going to be super friendly here, help out whenever they can. And um, that's just the way it is here in Grand Junction. So that takes us into number four, which is it is super dry here in Grand Junction. Our average annual humidity is about 39%, and I don't even believe that. I think it's probably less than that. We've had days of humidity at, you know, 7 8%. So the folks that come from Atlanta that we've helped move out here, they're ecstatic. They love the fact that there's not a lot of humidity here. But, you know, break out that, you know, that file stick in the shower because the first three or four months, the back of your ankles are going to have lines through them. They're going to be cracked. It just, you know, stock up on the lotion and drink uh, a lot more water than you're probably used to because it is super dry here. Um, also, on top of that, we're at 4,500 feet, so a little closer to the sun. So if you're not used to, you know, getting sunburned, you're definitely going to have the potential to have that here in Grand Junction, especially when you head up to the mountains, even Powderhorn Ski Resort, which is only about 45 minutes away. The base elevation there is 8,000 feet, so even closer closer to the sun and that uh, reflection off of the snow. I mean, you can get burned super easy and super quick. So a lot of lotion, a little extra water than you might be used to, and definitely put that sunscreen on when you head out on a, maybe a snowy day up at the ski resorts to make sure you don't get that sunburn. All right, takes us into number five, and this one's kind of a weird one. I actually, before moving out here, did a little research on my own about some of the school district scores. Um, if you look on niche, N-I-C-H-E dot com, you're going to see that some of the scores of some of the schools might not be as high as you'd like them to be. And it, it's kind of weird. I did some research on how they score some of the schools with their grades. And I do know it has a lot to do with the household income and population, not just specifically some of the test scores for some of the students there. Um, now, as real estate agents, we cannot and will not steer you into certain areas. That's just public data and public information that you can research on your own um, but you know again if you look at some of the front range schools with a home uh, median home price of six hundred thousand versus 350 here you might see you know uh, maybe a little more a's and b's on some of the schools there um, what i can tell you is colorado is school of choice so you definitely can petition and apply to have your kid go to a different school that you think might be uh, you know something a better fit for them and we have a ton of charter schools here cap rock academy is one that comes to mind um, i can also tell you that my my son has flourished in the elementary, middle school, junior and high school. He's going to head off to college next year. I actually brought home a straight A report card, which kind of made me think, okay, who'd you pay for that? But no, he actually works super hard. So, I mean, it's what you put into it, obviously. And then, you know, on top of all that, you have, uh, you know, like I said, those charter schools that you can uh, kind of look into as well. And, you know, you, you definitely have to kind of do that research and, and find out what might be a good fit for your child. Um, again, Josh, my son is doing just fine and flourishing and odds are your, your children will probably do just fine as well. All right, number six. So we did a video on the Grand Junction Regional Airport, which is 
phenomenal. We absolutely love it. Most of the clients that we've talked to that, uh, you know, they've done their research and they said, that's absolutely perfect. It's 10 to 15 minutes from anywhere in town. Overnight parking is nothing. I think it's 15 bucks uh, compared to John Wayne Airport where uh, when I grew up in California, it was like 40 bucks overnight parking. Uh, here's, the, here's the rub though. You've got probably five or six major cities in five states that leaves 45 out that you can take a direct flight to. So you can go to, let's count them off, Los Angeles, you can go to Salt Lake, you can go to Denver, you can go to Phoenix or Mesa, Arizona, and you can go to Dallas. That's about it. So any other large city in the country, if you're a business traveler, and that is just something that's a must have to have a direct to Tampa or Miami or you know Chicago, Nashville, it, it, you're not going to have that ability coming out of the Grand Junction Regional Airport. Now for other cities that are similar in size, I think our airport offers a whole lot more uh, for most towns that have 65, 70,000 people. Uh, but again, if that's just a, a deal breaker for you, um, you're working remotely for a big company, but they need you to fly all over the country on a regular basis. Maybe that's a big deal, maybe it's not, but you know, again, just wanted to make sure that you knew that those five cities are about what you're dealing with. Um, maybe that's a deal breaker, maybe it's not. So number seven, let's talk about the incessant ongoing road construction here in Grand Junction. You are probably going to you know, run into orange cones just about wherever you drive in the valley. It's just they're, they're trying to keep up the infrastructure with, even though our growth rate is pretty, pretty uh, minimal, it's like one and a quarter percent annually, um, so it's not much, but they're trying to make sure that they keep up with, uh, with the demand and um, you know the on-ramp for I-70 they're building off of 20 road which is something we absolutely need but no matter where you're driving around in town you're probably gonna hit that dude with the stop and the slow letting 15 cars go through one way and then he'll flip it around it's your turn now you can go the great news is the average commute time here is only about 14 minutes anyway, so add 60 seconds to that. Uh, it just seems to me that I'm always kind of in a hurry and then I hit those orange cones. I'm like, oh, here we go again. But uh, it's probably something that you're gonna run into on a regular basis. Um, the flip side again is the commute times are pretty minimal uh, no matter where you're going in the valley anyway. But if you hate the, the, the construction zones and uh, I wouldn't say traffic, you know, obviously Obviously, when you hit one of those, you're going to have to stop. Um, but if you're used to a town that you live in or you've explored another area where they're done with their infrastructure and there's no more building going on for some time, again, might give you pause, maybe not. Just wanted to throw that out there. All right, let's talk about number eight. We've hit on this before, but I really wanted to kind of drill down on it. If you're in your mid-20s, early 20s, heck, maybe even late 20s, and you're not going to school here at Colorado Mesa University, I can tell you there's just not a ton of nightlife for you to do here. If that's something that you're really looking forward to and you're used to doing that now, there's probably 10 places that I would recommend that you might have find some fun and live music and those sorts of things. But other than the, you know, the mountain biking, which is world class, we've got the hiking up on the monument, we've got the Colorado River. I mean, that's why most of the clients that are reaching out or moving out here is that outdoor lifestyle and the landscapes in the scenery, the slower pace. But if you're looking for a super fast pace, Grand Junction's probably not going to be the area for you to move to uh, unless that's you know kind of your, your jam. Christy, actually, before we met, thought she would move to Vegas because she told her friends and family, I'm done with Grand Junction. There's nothing to do here. Yeah, that lasted six months and she moved back. It just, the, the, the Grand Junction lifestyle does get into your DNA. So a lot of people try to get out of here and they always wind up moving back. But, you know, again, if you're looking to do a ton of stuff, you might have some second thoughts about moving to Grand Junction. All right, let's talk about number nine and the median home price here in Grand Junction, which is about 350, which means half of the homes are selling above 350 and half of the homes are selling below 350,000. And I looked at the entire state of Texas as of two days ago, where the median home price is 300. 
probably similar in square footage, I would imagine. But here's the thing. We've had people from Texas that are moving here to Grand Junction, paying a little bit more in that median home price because they're saying, Robert, there's just nothing in, nothing like that in Texas versus Grand Junction as far as the landscapes, the scenery, the National Monument. It's just too flat here. We've got to get out of here. So it, I guess it depends on what really is the most important to you. Can you find uh, a median home price lower than Grand Junction? You absolutely can. So again, it just depends on what's the most important to you. Is the price point the absolute most important? Or are you okay with maybe getting a little smaller home here in Grand Junction and being able to enjoy that, that incredible lifestyle? So uh, that's number nine. All right, number 10, which kind of bleeds from number nine, which is there are a ton of different areas that you can move into here in Grand Junction. Sometimes just looking at those super cool photos online really doesn't tell the whole story. So probably the hardest part is going to be finding that perfect house that's in that perfect area. We've got the North area, which is super popular, the Northeast, the Southeast is becoming real popular. Of course, the Red Redlands, everyone's looking at the Redlands because you got those gorgeous monument views. Fruta, which is eight minutes away off to the west of the valley, and then Palisade off to the east end of the valley. So um, it might be while you're here, a good idea to get in touch with us, and we'll have that phone conversation with you as well to really kind of go over some of those key items that are the most important to you and your family so we can drive you into those areas based on your goals, what might be the best fit for you. A $300,000 home in Fruta is going to be a totally different deal on a $300,000 home in the northwest or northeast part of town. So that's going to be, you know, kind of the most difficult thing to, to determine. And that's where we come in. Um, so again, if you're looking to move out this way and thinking about Grand Junction, uh, make sure that you reach out, give us a phone call, shoot us a text, send us an email, because as much as we love doing these videos, we would love nothing more than to help you accomplish your real estate goals here in Grand Junction. And if you're brand new to the channel, heck, hit subscribe, tap the bell so you're notified every single time we post new video. We do about one or two a week, depending, uh, but we got your back here when moving to Grand Junction. Until the next video, we'll catch you later.